kissing toes again. And I can't wait to kiss some toes again. They're always hopping in my garden at night time. And I wish they'd just come out for me to kiss. Kissing toads again. I can wait to kiss my slimy friends. They just want to search all night for some bugs. And I can't help but kiss some toads again. Kissing toads again. Their amphibious nature always makes me happy. Kissing toads again. <laughs> And I can't wait to kiss them. How are you going? I don't know if you could tell, but I love frogs and toads. They've got everything all the other lovable creatures lack. The slimy skin, the big eyes, the long tongue, the hoppy legs, and the little babies that pop out of their skin. It's beautiful. And Australia used to be filled with them. Everywhere you looked, there was a frog. My childhood was one big frog buffet. But sadly, things have kind of changed, and frogs are no longer having a great time. Over one third of Australia's frog species are now considered threatened, and three have already become extinct. For example, corroboree frogs. These stupid looking things used to be so common that fishermen would use them as bait on their fishing line. But now, there are only 50 left in the wild, and the poor fishermen have had to resort to other endangered animals for bait, like pandas or pangolins. But it's not the fishermen's fault. They're just doing what their fisher mum and fisher dad taught them to do. And besides, there's much more devastating factors, like us cutting down and putting poo in their swamps, the introduction of super predators like cats and the French, and now, most devastatingly, this little fungi known as BD or Batrochytrium dendrobatatus for short, which despite being a fungi, isn't very fun. Now this guy is responsible for 90 extinctions and the decline of 900 species of frog around the world. It's also been dubbed by scientists as the deadliest plague known to mankind, beating BP oil refinery by a whopping 56 extinctions. Wow. Now all these factors combined make it very hard for frogs to survive, especially for these big fat green boys. You know, I remember being a wee lad and the amount of joy I felt when I found one of them on the front window of my house. But I haven't seen one now for at least 20 years and I haven't really experienced happiness since. And I'm definitely not the only miserable adult that's noticed the absence of froggos. Many Sydney ciders have also been very vocal about the decline in green frogs. So much so that it even made the front page Australian news and has gotten everyone scratching their heads wondering why this green frog genocide is happening. But it also made me suspect that these people only care because the frogs are green. You know, if it were the brown frogs that were disappearing, maybe Karen over here wouldn't care so much about it and would actually think it's a good thing, as she says they're always loitering around the neighbourhood and making loud noises in their cars. Now I'm not a scientist, and I'm not qualified to say this in any way, but maybe their decline could legitimately be linked to their skin colour. I mean a similar animal coloured decline happened during the Industrial Revolution. When the Industrial Revolution began and all the trees were cut down and air was filled with smog, a bunch of animals died out. But an interesting thing happened with the peppered moth. Not only did people discover it made a great spice, but its species seemed to change colour. As the environment became dirtier and dirtier, the white peppered variants of the moth died out and the darker pepper variants were able to survive in the dark smog filled landscape and is now the most common form of pepper found in kitchens today. And as we cut down more and more bush and create increasingly larger and greyer urban areas, I'm wondering if this big fat green boy that used to thrive camouflaging on bright green leaves is now unable to survive in our bland urban environment. Like look at it, on that wall. How can you not want to eat that? Also, while I've noticed the decline of green tree frogs, I've also noticed an increase in other species of frogos, the Parian tree frog and striped marsh frog. And these are two darker species that seem quite happy in urban landscapes. Now, don't get me wrong, I do really like these frogs, but they're already experts at multiplying by themselves and don't need the help of a love guru. Unlike this fat guy. 
Now, usually when you want to help out frogs, you get lame advice like make a pond, plant some plants, do the thing. But I am so sick of listening to Costa from Gardening Australia. Now, I've listened to him for six years on growing advice and I still can't produce a beard. So why would I trust him on how to root? So instead, I'll be following the tried and tested mating methods of underage parents using music and substances. And I recently saw this article which talked about the effectiveness of using speakers to lure fish towards new reefs by making lively fish noises. And this makes so much sense to me. Like if you are out in the city and you're feeling hungry and you're walking past some restaurants, do you go to the empty quiet one? Or do you go to the one that has paper cutouts of people and a speaker playing dining noises? The choice is obvious. So I'm gonna do exactly this. I also found this article that claims that sharks enjoy jazz. And I thought if sharks enjoy jazz and they don't even have legs, imagine how much these hoppy boys would enjoy it. So I'll test the music as well. Now clearly, if I want to use speakers to attract frogs to my yard, they need to exist in the area in the first place. I can't just play the mating call of the Amazonian milk frog and hope it shows up. Trust me, I've tried. So I got this app called Frog ID. Now this is a great app and I don't usually promote stuff, but if you live in Australia, you love frogs and you're also sick of Tinder, then this is the app for you. Using this app, I was able to find out what kind and where all the single frogs in my area were. And I'm not gonna show you exactly where because a lot of you are creeps and you'll find out my location, but the most abundant are Perian tree frogs, striped marsh frogs, toadlets, dwarf green tree frogs, and surprisingly, some green tree frogs, which I haven't seen, but are still around. So my plan is to start with the most common frogs and see if I can attract them before working my way up and attempting to attract the rarer ones. And then I'll move on to some smooth jazz. And this is gonna be one of my most complicated builds. I need to get this speaker and put it in this container here. And it was pretty hard at first, but I got the hang of it. Now, when I'm doing this, I don't plan to tell my family or neighbors because it's extremely important that they don't know it's a man-made noise that they are hearing. You know, when you're lying in bed and you hear a frog croaking all night in the rain, it's relaxing and it helps you fall asleep. But if you actually knew that that croaking noise was created by an insane man sitting outside your window scraping some pans together. You would probably Shut go up. out and hit him in the face and then call the police. Shut up! Shut the hell up! Shut up! Shut so this up. is going to remain a secret Stop. until they watch this video and then find out. And word of warning to you, Thomas, don't forget who came out on top during the lawnmower argument. And I have no idea if this is gonna work. I'm gonna start by playing this recorded frog call from the Frog ID app and just hope it wasn't a recording of some super sleazy frog who's saying, Ah, mademoiselle, what are you doing right now? Maybe you can come in and join me on my comfy bed. I have some red wine. Maybe we can have some cigarettes. And then I just scare away all the frogs in my area. I also need to get the repetition and volume right in order to properly trick the frogs. First up, I'm going to attempt to attract the Perian tree frog, whose call sounds otherworldly. Can you imagine walking around at night and hearing this noise and not knowing what it was? <laughs> kids that got scared while watching this, don't worry, that was not the real predator. He was locked up a couple of months ago. Now I know that the Perian tree frogs like to hide out in the birds of paradise right here. So I've set up the camera and speaker in this bin facing the trees and I'm going to leave it playing all night and hopefully we can record some frogs. Okay, I let it play all night and when I came out to check in the morning, there were two psychos having a domestic in my yard.
Oi. After I broke them up, I could not see any frogs hiding in the bin, so let's go check the game cam. Alrighty, it looks like the only thing I've managed to attract is this predator. And that makes sense. They must have heard the frog call and thought, huh, free meal. And I can't imagine how terrifying it would be being a small animal in my yard with lions roaming it all night. The last thing you'd want to do is start loudly screaming out your location and how horny you are. Which is probably why they usually call out from inside the hollows of plants. Okay, I'm going to move on and try attract the eastern froglet, which I've seen in my yard before, but only once or twice and a while ago now. And my plan this time is to do it on a rainy night, which means hopefully there'll be more frogs moving about and the cats won't be. I've also decided to put the speaker at the bottom of this container, which should catch the ground dwelling frog and also prevent cats from reaching in. All right, that is the perfect volume to annoy my neighbors. So I'm going to check back in the morning. And in the morning, it's full of frogs which is great. If I lived in Paris, I would be a rich man. And I don't think this is an accident that they fell into this container. Like if there was just one frog, it might be, but three? Come on. It's like that famous George Bush saying, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me, fool me, the, the fooler, fooler can't get fooled again. And after checking the game cam, the frogs don't seem to have triggered it as they're probably too small or sneaky which is a shame, as I really wanted to watch their froggy brains make the decision to jump in. But the test has been successful, which is great news. Then you can have a threesome, all right? Deal? So I'm gonna try again attracting the Perian tree frog, as I think I might have better luck in this spot. I repeated the process for a couple of days with nothing, until finally I attracted this beautiful big boy. Oh, he's so big. Oh, stop biting me. This guy's biting me on my other side. Oh, you are beautiful. And again, it's hard to tell whether the frog was attracted to the container because of the speaker or because of the various bugs that had fallen into the container. And this might actually explain why he stayed in there, considering he is very, very good at parkour. You, whoa. You are a ninja guy. But because this is my video, I'm gonna say it was a great success. You're gonna jump onto the land zone here. You're gonna do it. And the frog deserved to be treated like a star. Can I just put you on here for a thumbnail quickly? Just... Okay, let's go take you, oh. Whoa. So I think after that success, I'm going to attempt to attract a green tree frog. And to increase my chances, I've purchased this little model frog, which um um which came with with lipstick already on it, and this should help lure them in. Then I let that run for a couple of days, annoying my neighbors and family, but I didn't have any results. And I don't know if it's because I'm playing the mating call wrong, or it's because of the hordes of cats in my yard, or it's just because the species of frog does not actually exist in my area anymore. But let's move on, and it's party time. So first, we're gonna get the frogs warmed up with some smooth jazz and hope they get to know each other. All right, thanks boys. Just stay there for three days, all right? So I let that play for a couple of nights and nothing. And that answers the age old question on whether frogs like jazz, no. Now, even though this experiment didn't work to attract the now disappearing green frogs, I still think it has potential and demonstrates the effectiveness of speakers. Although obviously it can't undo the severe ecological damage we have done to Australia's environment and an amphibian population, but it could be very useful for that one person that watches this video first and thinks, you know what? I do want to steal and hoard all my neighbor's frogs. So there you go, people. Go start hoarding and kissing. Actually, before you go start smooching, if you like this video, go check out some of my other animal videos, like this one, where I stuff lizards in my house, or this one, where I train some magpies, and then maybe consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Kissing toads again! I can wait to kiss my slimy friends. They just want to search all night for some bugs, and I can't help but kiss.